Howdy, how's it going? Uh, today we're going to look at using CSS transforms to create a cube. And this is an intro essentially to 3D transforms. And with this, you can go off and create all sorts of things. So here I just have an empty HTML file, which is linking to a style sheet. And we're going to start by creating a parent element called cube. And a cube has six sides, one for the front, one for the back, one on each side, top and bottom. So let's create six elements inside and we'll call them cube side. And to differentiate which one's which, uh, I'm gonna set the number of the side in each. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Get rid of that little gap and fill in this part. So if we do that, we should see there's our one, two, three, four, five, six. Why are they in the center of the page? I'm currently setting the body's content to display flex. So now we need to actually start styling our cuboid. And let's give our cube uh, height and width of 200 pixels. And each side of the cube should be that width and height. So let's do cube side height 100% and width 100%. Cool, so we can see that they're there. But let's give them a little bit of color. Um, let's just go with background. And for color, I'm gonna use HSLA, so we get a bit of um, reduced opacity. So I'm gonna do HSLA, and this will be a reddish color. So zero, 50%, 50%, and I'll go 0 0.5. And to give it that kind of wireframe feel, uh, I'm gonna give each panel a border of two pixel solid and let's go with HSL 0, 0%, 10%. So now we see that each has its own little frame. Now it would be quite tricky to translate each panel or transform each panel and then move it from that center point so we need all of our sides to start from the same point. So to do that, we can set them to position absolute. And if we set them to position absolute, the issue we will have is this. They become huge. So that is because they're now absolutely positioned to the body and not the cube. So to fix that, can use position relative on the cube and now our six panels or sides now overlap. So now we can start using CSS transforms to create that cube. If we create the cube as is now, um, we won't actually see anything. Um, but to dig into that, let's hop onto some paper and I can actually draw this out and show you how it works. So let's get this keyboard out of the way and let's bring a pen and paper in. So we're going to be using the transform property and we're mainly concerned with using translate and rotate. So transform allows us to do things like rotate on the x-axis. Let's get that in shot. Rotate on the x-axis, uh, rotate on the y-axis, or we can also translate on the x, the y, and when we start using 3D, we can translate on the z-axis. Um, now, to be able to do 3D transforms, we need the concept of perspective, and we also need to set a transform style, preserve 3D, on the containing element to our scene, in this case, the body. So what I'm going to do 
let's just jump back onto the body and change the perspective to a thousand pixels. And I'm going to set the transform style to preserve 3D on our cube. Now if we hop back, what will happen here is that we have our, let's just get this right in here. We have our cube side. So this is our parent element. And then we have the six pieces coming off of it. So side one, side two, side three, side four, side five, side six. They are built around this starting point. So if you imagine, if we looked at the parent side on, we wouldn't see anything because a div has no, no thickness. But the first side would actually be translate Z the depth or half the depth of our cube. And the second one would be in the opposite direction. So if we were to look at that from the top, it would be like that. But two would also need to be flicked around so we could translate it and then rotate it. And that's something cool we can do with CSS transforms. We can chain the transform. So we will do translate Z back and then rotate so the panel shows the right way. Oh, loose the paper. <laughs> so let's jump in and actually create that because I'm mindful that we don't have terribly long amount of time to get this done. So for cube side emf of type one and we're going to do transform translate 3d this gives us the x y and z we'll do zero zero and 100 pixels and you can see how it it got larger um, it's now larger than the other panels because it has been brought forwards it's come forwards and you see how i come to the camera it gets bigger go away it gets smaller so that's what's happened there. Um, so if we do cube side two, we go the opposite direction, minus, but then we also rotate Y because we want to rotate it so we can see the two. And we need to change that to the second one. <laughs> so you can actually see it very, very faintly. It's gone backwards and you can see the two in the top corner there. So let's create the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth. So three, four, five, and six. The third one is going to rotate Y by 90 and then translate out. So we're just taking this and turning it the other way. So we go rotate Y 90 degrees and then translate out. And we can get rid of that. Oh, sorry, that's the fourth one. But it'll be the same. It will be the same. It's just a difference of the rotation angle. So for this one, it will be minus 90. And you can see how those two sides... And we might need to swap them around. They might not be exactly right. Um, it might be a case that it's actually that way. And then the fifth and the sixth is the top and the bottom. So for the fifth one, it will be rotate on the Y 90, push up. And the sixth one, rotate on the Y minus 90, push down. So similar to the, well, it won't be rotate Y, sorry. I take that back. It will be rotate X. So take that. And we'll do 
rotate x, rotate x. And we should, sorry, that should give us the six sides to our cube. And the way to check that is to actually rotate our cube. So if we do transform, rotate X, 24 degrees, and rotate Y, I don't know, 24 degrees, and let's see what we get. And there's our cube. We can see exactly as we expected. We can mess around with those angles. We can change the perspective, make things tighter or more distorted, depending on how you look at it. But that is the cube created with transforms. We have the first side, the second side at the back, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And to do that, we've chained the transform property using Translate 3D on the z-axis and rotate X or Y, depending on where we need to go. So the Translate property, if we just review this, the Translate property gives us the ability to move on the X, Y or Z axes and the rotate Y or rotate X given a amount of degrees will rotate an element. We could also just use rotate without an X or Y and that will just spin it. Um, I think that is pretty much it. But if, just to show you how transform style works, the default for transform style is flat. So if we change that to flat, we actually see that nothing happens. Um, we can rotate this around a bit more. We can see that it's just flat now. So that preserved 3D and the preserved 3D and our perspective is key to this. If I was to change that to zero, it gives no sort of perspective, but 100 it's crazy. So normally a value around sort of 800 to 1200 will get you in the right kind of ballpark, depending on the size you need. But yeah, that's been a quick look at how to create a cube with CSS transforms. Um, I hope you learned something from it and I hope it's given you the curiosity to go and explore CSS transforms. Stay awesome people.